What's going on everybody? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to get into a laptop, computer, or whatever device that is currently running Windows 10. I'm not sure if it works with Windows 11, maybe. I haven't tested it out yet. But as always, it's for educational purposes only, and the only thing that you would need to pull this off is a Windows bootable USB. After a quick Google search on how to create installation uh, USB for Windows 10, you'll come across this link here. I'll probably just link this down below in the description. So the next thing you want to do is actually select the Windows 10 tool. Actually, I need to try this Windows 11 one to see if it'll work. I'll, I'll try try this some other time. But uh, I just want to hit Windows 10 and then download tool now. All right, so once it's downloaded, you want to open it up. It takes some time, so you just got to be a little patient. All right, cool. So you just scroll down these terms and agreements. You can read them if you want. Uh, I usually just skim it. Just hit next. What we want to do is create installation media. So let's just press that and hit next. Leave the default options here, 64-bit architecture, Windows 10. This is if you're going to use this on a 64-bit system, obviously. So since we are, we're going to leave it at that. Uh, choose which media to use. We want to use it on a USB flash drive. Uh, for this, make sure that you have a USB that has more or up to, at, at least as it says here, uh, eight gigabytes of storage. So you just hit next, uh, select USB flash drive. Here's where you'll select your USB and then hit next. And um, I'm not gonna run this because I've already done it before. So I'm not gonna sit here and wait for the process to finish. Uh, so I'll see you after you have done this. After the whole installation process is finished and complete, uh, the contents inside of that USB should look similar to this. So what I'm gonna do now is actually use this USB on a Windows VM, just so that you can see it on the screen. Because um, I know that it probably wouldn't look the best if I was recorded on my phone on my laptop But I promise you that it will work the exact same way whether you're doing this on a laptop or a PC So without further ado, let's go ahead and do that. Here we are at my Windows 10 VM. If we try and log in Incorrect Incorrect and we can't really do much from here. So what I'm gonna do here only because this is from a VM I have to actually plug in the USB first and accept it and be like okay yeah I want to sign it to this VM before it to be plugged into this VM so let's go ahead and do that real quick so I'm just gonna unplug it from my host machine plug it back in and now it's like okay new USB device discovered or detected then we just want to connect it to this virtual machine and now we actually just want to actually do it from here just want to restart this and then once you restart this like when it whole thing reboots all you want to do is just keep spamming f2 if you're on a laptop if it has the fn key then you want to just hold fn and then keep spamming f2 what we want to do is actually boot off of this usb so that's all we're trying to do so let's restart it Alright, cool. So now we're at the boot manager. And so what we're going to do is boot off of the USB device. So let's go to here. This part takes a really long time, <laughs> mainly on a VM. Uh, not so much probably if you're doing this already on like a desktop or a laptop, but I've noticed on a VM this takes forever. So if you're doing this also on a VM, just sit back and just do something else while all this takes the time to, to load up. All right, so once everything's booted up, we have officially booted off of the USB. So this is the first thing that you'd see, this purple Windows setup screen. But what a lot of people don't know is, instead of actually having to go through the Windows setup, this can be abused in a way. So what we wanna do now is hit Shift F10, and this will bring us a command prompt. Um, from here, what we can actually do is list off all the drives that are connected on the machine and be able to view the files off of those drives that are on the machine so we do that using the command wmic logical disk get name to list off all the drive names so we got c d e so let's just go into c do a dir zoom out a little bit here and then let's go into users and see if we can get access to that uh, offensive security offensive sec user that we weren't able to log into all right we can also view, right? Yep. What we can also do from here is open up Notepad. And a cool thing that you can do with Notepad is if you were to go to Save As, right? 
let's go to here all files um, let's say if we got access onto a machine this way and we found some files that we want to keep or let's say there's a whole folder of files that we want to keep or something right so let's go to let's go to uh, let's actually go into that C drive actually from here we can see right here is our beautiful USB right here is the C drive that we connected to so let's go to here let's actually go to offensive sex profile and then say hmm you know this is an interesting folder right let me just copy this go back here let's go back onto our USB and then paste it hit refresh and now we can see that we actually took that folder that was on that person's desktop and saved it onto a USB without even having to enter a single password and from here we can just be like you know what that's it I'm done I got what I needed to get just shut off the machine unplug the USB and go about your day you found out how to get files and be able to transfer files from the machine that you didn't have access to onto your USB. All right, that's all good and dandy, but what if you want some type of persistence? Since we're able to access certain files, what we could do is go into the C drive that Windows is installed on, on the victim machine, and replace a certain file with CMD so that when we go over to the login screen for Windows, if we try and hit a specific key, instead of that original program being run it will run cmd once it runs cmd it will open it up in elevated privileges as nt authority system which would be on the same level as root in linux world and from there we can actually create ourselves another user and add them to the administrators group or we can do whatever we want from there right because we've officially gained super user privileges from there so i'm just going to show you how to do that real quick all right, so here we are back at the login screen and the feature that we're going to be taking advantage of is called sticky keys. So sticky keys is an accessibility feature of some graphical user interfaces that are basically put there to assist those with disabilities. So if we were to go here and hit shift five times, we see these warnings up here of, you know, do you want to enable sticky keys? So this is basically the program that we're going to take advantage of. Uh, inside of Windows System 32, there's a file called setc.exe, which basically executes this. So what I wanted to show you beforehand was when I hit shift five times, it only shows this message pop up of do you want to enable sticky keys? So what we're going to do is actually now boot into the USB, go into System 32 on the C drive of this victim machine and replace the original setc.exe with cmd.exe which is command prompt so when we hit shift five times instead of this box popping up cmd will pop up and then we'll be able to do anything we want from there so let's go ahead and do that here we are back at the purple screen let's hit shift f10 go into the c drive cd into windows system 32 and now what we want to do is actually create a little backup of the original setc.exe so let's just name it setc.exe.back and then what we want to do is copy cmd.exe into setc.exe so what this is doing is it's taking the original cmd.exe and creating a second copy and just renaming it setc.exe so you're not getting rid of your original cmd at all but you're just taking the place of where the initial setc.exe used to be so let's run that and now from here all we want to do is just exit and then reboot All right, so here we are back at the login screen again. And now whenever we hit shift five times, instead of just seeing the sticky keys alert pop up, we should also see a CMD prompt. So let's give that a shot. One, two, three, four, five. Got the alert. And here we are. Now if we type in who am I, we see that we are NT authority system. So from here, there are many different ways to backdoor a windows machine right one of the ways being just creating a scheduled task whenever user logs in run this powershell script that's hosted on an external server and when it's executed it's executed on memory and it talks back to our c2 our command and control server to give us a shell let's say every time a user logs on every time the machine gets locked right every time a lock screen appears execute every time the machine reboots um, or you can execute every time a user logs off. But just for this example and demo, I'll just 
create a new user and add them to the administrators group. But yeah, there's many different ways. I'll probably create future videos on those later. So to create a user in Windows in CMD is pretty easy. Just do net user, the name. So let's just call it test and the password test123 and then slash add. And then you want to add them to a the administrators group. So just net local group administrators um, test the user and then slash add now if you do a net user test you should now see that they are part of the administrators group before the video ends I'm just going to show you how to revert set c.exe to just be back to how it was before so that you can have everything back in your original state so just boot back into the USB so once you boot it back into the USB let's go ahead and shift F10 Go into the C drive, CD into Windows, System32. Then we want to delete the CMD copy of setc.exe. And then just rename our setc.exe backup back to setc.exe. So let's, we named it to uh, setc.exe.back and just rename that back to setc.exe. So now we just exit this and reboot. Now, if we were to hit Shift five times, we should no longer see the CMD prompt. And there we go back to its original state so that's about it for this video <laughs> i hope you guys learned something new if you want to protect yourself from this remember to always encrypt your drives and your data and um yeah that's about it for this video see ya